Hello and welcome. In this video, I'll try to explain to you why you do not need to calibrate your e-step. So let's make a small excursion. Um, we use pulleys and belts, timing belts in 3D printers uh, quite often. And these motion systems are very, very accurate. However, I have seen and heard people and even YouTubers talk about calibrating your X and Y axis uh, steps per millimeter value. Um, to compensate basically for inaccurate prints. However, with, is, this is a false assumption because material properties determine if your um, print is dimensionally accurate. For instance, uh, PELA has very low shrinkage rate, uh, while ABS has a very high shrinkage rate. So if you would calibrate your steps of millimeter value for your X and Y axis, then you would actually just compensate for the material properties, which you shouldn't. We should compensate for this in our slicer by scaling the model up or down. Um, actually, you scale it up because all polymers basically shrink. Um, and um, so we would scale the model to compensate for the shrinkage, but you wouldn't uh, calibrate your steps and millimeter value for each material eat every time to compensate for the shrinkage. And the same goes for um, calibrating your e-steps. Um, the reason why a lot of people then tell in forums and Facebook and Reddit and Twitter that their e-steps is a certain amount and they had to calibrate it and change it has to do with, again, the material properties rather than the drive gear or the dual drive gears or the extruder themselves. Um, I called now these two properties squishiness of the filament and compression of the filament. These are just random terms which I generated. Do not use them in scientific circles. They're, they're yeah, just funny words I used to, to explain these two phenomenons. Um, the, these two material properties affect uh, single drive gear extruders more than it does dual drive gear extruders. Um, a single drive gear extruder is for instance the one on the ender where you have a bearing that pushes the filament on the drive gear and on a dual drive gear system these factors are less dominant or yeah have less of a factor but they do exist even there. So when um, we're calibrating, or let's not call it calibrating, when we're calculating um, a theoretical e-step value for our extruder, we look at, we look at the drive gear and see uh, look at the radius where is, it is in contact with the filament. And from this value, we can then calculate our theoretically optimal, let's not call it optimal, um, let's call it our theoretically e-step value. So what, what if, the, if the filament would be ideal, this is the, the correct value. However, since we do not have ideal filaments and um, filaments do not behave ideal, um, we have um, effect, let's call it, we, as I call it, squishiness of the filament is where then the idler pushes the filament onto the drive gear. And since this filament is more soft, it's pushed deeper into the teeth of your drive gear and as such the contact radius or the effective radius is smaller which gives you a higher um, steps per millimeter value. Um, on the other hand if you have a quite rigid filament and it basically doesn't want to be pushed into the drive gears as much into the teeth of the drive gear um, then we get a bigger radius contact radius and this would result in a smaller steps per millimeter value. The other factor that influences your e-steps, um, if you would calibrate it this way, um, is the compression of the filament. So you might have noticed that if you calibrate your e-steps without a hot end, so just not extruding it, but being pushed, the filament just being pushed out of the extruder and then you calculate your e-step, you get a lower value than if you would if you would use a hot end. And that is because filaments don't like to be pushed through hot ends. It tries to, um, get around it somehow because you need pressure to put uh, to push the filament through the nozzle and the filament doesn't want to go through that nozzle so it tries to find a different way to compensate for the pressure. So what it does, it basically bulges up so the drive gears, the teeth of the drive gear pushes onto the filament and then compresses it and really tries to compress the filament to, to get through, through that nozzle and this compression has to be compensated and that's why you get a higher e-step value. So the old 
kind of way of calibrating your e-step stems from a time from the rip rap times when we couldn't accurately make drive gears or not very accurately they were homemade usually and since we needed some kind of value um, we used this method and this method is still being well recommended by some people to 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 use and to calibrate your ESIPs, which you shouldn't a manufacturer and nowadays we manufacture drive gears very accurately and as such a manufacturer should give you a theoretical e-step value which you should work with um, but again just like we uh, talked about the shrinkage of the material properties and x and y axis you can compensate in your slicer um, for different material properties, which I talked before, the squishiness and the compression. So each material behaves differently. So what we try to then manipulate or calibrate is your extrusion multiplier. Um, I'm not going to go now into depth how to calibrate the extrusion multiplier. Prusa has a very excellent, excellent um, tutorial website um, how to calibrate your um, extrusion multiplier. I would highly recommend the precise method. Um, if you don't have calipers yet, yes, you can use the visual method, but trust me, if you try to print ac um, accurate dimensional prints, then in the end, you will not get around buying some calipers at some point. So get yourself some calipers and do the precise method. There's a link to that article to calibrate your extrusion multiplier by Prusa in the description of this video. And let's hope that with this video, we get fewer recommendations that you need to calibrate your E-step values. I hope you learned something and until next time, bye.